Rev it up! It's Grand Prix Challenge on the Coco Show, episode 38. Hi everybody, welcome to the Coco Show. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Grand Prix Challenge. Ooh, I love a good challenge boat. Aaron, when was the last time you dropped the clutch? Oh, well... <laughs> I can't drive a clutch, I'll be honest with you. And if that has another meaning, I don't want to know. <laughs> did you ever attempt to drive the stick? I did. I tried to I tried to go with the stick. It's funny, the remember where the old post office is, there's a little hill right there? That's where the stick dreams died. Because <laughs> at that stoplight where you had to sort of hit the brake, the yep. clutch, and the gas all at once, my feet got confused. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with this. We don't so, live in a real stick-friendly uh, neighborhood. <laughs> or state. Yeah, state. Everything is... Everything is uphill. There's nothing better than being at a stoplight that's uphill and directly behind you is railroad tracks. Yeah. That happens all the time. <laughs> so if you, if you screw up, you'll be killed. Not conducive to wanting to drive a stick. No, no. Now, did you ever do any drag racing when you were a youth? Did you see what I drove? <laughs> no. You could probably beat me by literally dragging someone close to the car. <laughs> My cars, I dropped transmissions like they were going out of style, brother. My old cars were like a Chevy Nova, not the cool ones, the old kind. I had the old the Chevy Citation, a lot of Chevys in there. Junk, old, old, incredibly old Toyota, a Grand Am. I was mm. in there. Now, did you did you ever lust after any particular car? Say when you were in high school and you you drove into the parking lot, you saw some cool kid driving a blank. Well, you know it's funny because when I you know when I was in high school, no one had a good car. Mm -hmm. They all had garbage cars. And no one really seemed like to have, like, a cool dude car. You know what I mean? I remember thinking to myself, oh, look. It wasn't like driving into the, the drive-in in happy days where everybody had the hot rods no. and stuff and the like thing that. Is, I, went, I knew this chick, and she graduated, I don't know, seven, eight years after me. We used to hang out. And I went to her graduation, and there were all kinds of people getting cars for graduation gifts. And I was, that was foreign to me. I was like, what is this? And now when you go past the high school, they've all got the best conceivable cars. There's a lot of nice you know? cars. I remember there was a guy at school. He drove a Dodge Viper. Oh man! Yeah, you know who had the you know had an awesome car when he was a kid. It's the Brent. Really? Yeah, he had like a uh, what was that? A BMW? What? Like, Are like you an serious? Ancient one? Oh yeah, it had one of those uh, uh, torch. What are they called? The uh, pl uh, Zippo? fire plug or whatever to get it started. Oh, it was ancient. It's like a diesel. It was ancient. It was an ancient. Uh, I mean, it was indestructible, but it never worked. <laughs> So Brent would come rolling in this thing. I'd be like, man, Dad gave me an old Toyota to drive. And Brent comes rolling in with a BMW. I'm like, what is this? He can't be the favorite. He's a jerk. But I get on. Maybe I screwed up somewhere. I don't know. What, what did you drive in high school? I drove a 1982 blue Volvo 240. In high school you drove this? That was my first car. What year did you get it? Were you out was, of high school? No, I was a junior in high school when I got, when I got a car. You know the car I had in high school? I didn't have any car. I was caught. I was walking, brother. I didn't have a car. When did you get your first car? It was a long time. I drove mom and dad. Did you car walk to, to Marshall? Pizza. Oh, I didn't have a car down there for a long time. I walked. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you not have a job during high school? No. Yeah, I had a job after high school. My last year, I had a job and I drove their car. Oh, okay. I don't think I would have made a wad. I barely have a car now. You know, speaking of, you know, we're talking about the Grand Prix. Well, you know, not all of us. Uh, were got great cars, but you that's know, true. But my grandparents, you know, they had an old car because remember in 1982 that that car was 25 years old when yeah. I was driving it. So you know, I got some people get houses from their grandparents. I got a car. Not too bad. Though. Not too bad. Not, not too bad. But uh, since we're talking about a racing game today, I just want to throw this in because it's relevant. I uh, I've been driving for the past two weeks. And every day it felt like a race. You know, like you can upgrade your tires and stuff and upgrade your speed. It felt like someone downgraded my suspension. <laughs> it was like jelly suspension from Carmageddon. And I found out today because I told Dad, I'm like, listen, I got to put this car in the shop. This sucker's jacked up, brother. He goes, listen, because have we checked the air in your tires? I was like, no. And I went there this morning to check it. I had a tire at 16 PSI. Oh my gosh. Do you not, have a, do you not have a warning light in your car oh, that what? tells you? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Your no. car's not that old. Yes, it is. Oh, it's got the you know it's got the check engine light, but that thing's been on for fifteen years mm. now. I don't know. It's never been never been. No, I don't got a warning light. 
You just, I thought, the warning is when you wreck. And you I thought off. you were going to trade in the Jeep the last time it went into the shop. I thought you were getting well, get rid listen, of it. Just, this is not what I would call the best time to get a new vehicle, Grand Prix or otherwise. It's too expensive to get one, man. Mm. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to buy yourself something from Retro Rewind, Aaron. Run the ad. Are you ready to take the plunge into the exciting world of the Tandy Color Computer? Have you tried emulation and found it to be confusing and unreliable? the hell is Bitbanger? It's time to get yourself a real Coco and get yourself over to RetroRewind.ca to get it out with everything you need to enter the Coco universe. The Coco SDC is the fastest, easiest way to jump into the nirvana that is gaming on the Tandy Color Computer. Preloaded SD card is already included, so just pop it in your Coco and away you go. Pick up your Coco SDC at Retro Rewind and be sure to use the promo code AMIGOS10 to save 10% off the already low price. Thank you to RetroRewind.ca for sponsoring the Coco Show. All right, Aaron, let's talk about Grand Prix. Mm, Grand Prix Challenge, my favorite. Now, before we go any further. Yeah. I will tell you that for most of this week or most of this past month, yeah, I've been gearing up to play the wrong game. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, I heard that. Yeah, because there's another game for the Coco called Grand Prix, and right. I got it in my mind that we were not playing Grand Prix Challenge, but in fact Grand Prix. And I've never been happier to be wrong because there's not a whole lot to Grand Prix. If you don't think there's a lot to Grand Prix Challenge, Grand Prix is nothing. So. Well. <laughs> it's only thanks to uh, L. Curtis Boyle's uh, writing of a review that I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I need to play the right game. Yeah, well, I knew I knew about this one because I did a stream a, a couple of months ago. The Diacom on, stream. All the Diacom It's one games. of your most famous streams. Oh, yeah, it really got over like a million bucks. And so I knew this one uh, from there. So let's get into it. This is the Grand Prix Challenge. Don't blew the hype. If it's not the Grand Prix Challenge, you're playing the wrong game, brother. Mm -hmm. Authored by David Dees. I hope his name's not Dies. I'm going to go with Dees. Boy, let's run down the Dees. <laughs> he was from Diacom because guess what? He was the, I, he was he, the he, outfit. He, he, put the, he put the die in the die yeah. column, right? So listen to this lineup. I'm going to just go over it because they're so cool. Pump Man, Gold Runner 1 and 2, Color Car Action, Marble Maze, Knockout, Fighter Pilot, Karate, which I'm dying to get into, Paper Route, Gantlet. <laughs> Gantlet 2, Bouncing Boulders, Iron Force, Gates of Delirium, Russian Attack, Medieval Madness, Robotron 2084, and believe it or not, he worked on a Link, uh, Lynx game. He did the graphics for Joust on the wow. Lynx. So he went legit. Uh, and this was published by Dalkar, as I mentioned. <clears throat> they published all those. They also pub published a few other ones. Zidian, uh, Caladuro, which I also played during my Dicom stream. It's that crazy role-playing type game. You know, it was like a graphical... Oh, that's the semi-graphics movie. Yeah, and yeah I love course, that game. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention WrestleManiac, which mm -hmm. is coming on the show, and F-16. So he did all those... Those games were all from Diacom, and he did a good chunk of their games. So thumbs up to him. Uh, this was released in 97. This one both requires a Color Computer 3, believe it or not. 128K of RAM and a joystick. Uh, <clears throat> this will allow one to three players. Interesting. Uh, including a couple, uh, somebody on the keyboard, uh, if you have, if you want to go that route. Uh, and this is your classic uh, uh, top-down uh, racer on the yeah. loop gimmick. Super sprint type game. Yeah. Uh, this game, uh, this has you pitted against two other racers to get around the laps the quickest. And as an added fun time bonus, in between races, you can uh, pr uh, upgrade your car if you've got enough jack uh, from the previous race to do so. You win, uh, in between races, you win money to upgrade your car. Or, believe it or not, you don't, the, one of the options that I like in the upgrade section is you can also upgrade your points, which is interesting. <laughs> so you can actually spend money for points yeah. in this. This is a high score game. Now, uh, this game is pretty much, I would say, no frills. And a few options. It comes up. It gives you a list of the of the uh, uh, three racers and allows you to pick which one you want to play. And you basically assign them to either computer players or to other players. Uh, I could not get this to run just computer players. It demanded a human be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you get to do you do get to pick whichever car you want of the three. And the cars look pretty cool. There's a kind of a black one. There's kind of a red one. I think another one's like a blue. a, a bluish one. 
and they pretty much start with the same stats, but as you get to the game, the other cars and your car will get more jacked up. So just first impressions, both. This hones into view. What did you think? Uh, you know, I, I always am, I, I sort of have low expectations whenever we're going into Coco games uh, and from a graphical fidelity standpoint. And so I was pleasantly surprised to see this. And then when I found out that it was a Coco 3 only game, it started to make more sense. Yeah. Uh, this is a colorful game. Uh, it uh, it does give you, uh, you know, I would say that the cars are rendered as well as you can from this viewpoint. Yeah. Um, so my first impressions, you know, before I started racing, I would say, yeah, it's okay. Um, no, no, no music. This, uh, of course, uh, you do get some sound effects, uh, but the, you know, the the proof is in the racing, as it were. So, what did you think of the racing? It's the not the best, and I, I, I'm going to go uh, multiple reasons. I'm not a big fan of this title, and I'm going to go into why. Yes, it, as a top-down race title, it does look the part. All right, and given the fact that well, you know when it came out and stuff, yeah, okay, the cars do look good. the The track looks pretty good. Uh, the racing itself, there are some several things that bother me about this game. The first thing is the computer cars can can go right through obstacles. You're yeah, gonna have not one. only the computer cars, you all. Oh, I mean, like, okay, so, I mean, they can go through and be unaffected. You can't. Oh yeah, but uh, we shouldn't mention that you can drive right through your opponents in this game. Yes, that's something. That was my next qualm. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 you're all driving cars that effectively are there can't interact with one another. So you can literally drive. There's, there's no opponent. rubbing, and you, there's no when you wreck. No one else is uh, upset by your wreck, and so what does what does that mean? It means when you if you have a screw up. Uh, in a lot of games, you can buy some time because other people have to avoid you or whatever. Not in this game. I mean, because this game's in the sort of the, you know, if you play something like a Super Sprint or whatever, uh, you, there's the fun of it is that you're all involved in a race. This is almost like fighting ghost cars in future games where you yes. play like fake yes. cars. That's what this reminds me of. The fact that, I'll tell you, one of my pet peeves is when other enemies aren't affected by crap that can affect you. That drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. So there's also that. Uh, like I said, there you're going to hit oil slicks. You can hit water. Oil slicks make you spin, for down, like whatever direction you're going. So sometimes you can go through them and you're okay when you come out to the other side. But a lot of times you put you get put in the wall. When you get put in the wall in this game, if it, you're instantly stopped, and then you've just got to start back up. What does that mean? Well, it mean it just it makes it slows the game down totally. You can't sort of touch a wall and rub up against it. You're stopped. Mm -hmm. So the second you touch the wall, there's all your momentum gone. Now, when you uh, purchase upgrades, uh, you can purchase acceleration to make sure so that isn't as bad. But in the first couple levels without acceleration, that's a real problem. Another thing I don't like about the game is, is the control scheme is not the best. Now, I've used this sort of, this is not that unusual a control scheme for a race game like this. Uh, I had a game like this for the Odyssey too. I think it was called Speedway. And it was pretty much exactly the same in terms of the in terms of the way you you know you played it, but it doesn't feel that good in this game. I had real trouble. I tried this with a uh, with the Black Beauty, and I also tried it with my. I rigged it up to work on my on my hand in my Super Nintendo rip off controller on the Mister, and neither one of them felt all that great. And there was neither one of them where I could negotiate the course with any sort of confidence. It, I, I thought that it made it very difficult. What, what, what did you think about the control in this? Well, the control is unique. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I very rarely get a chance to uh, brag on my gaming prowess, but yeah. I think I figured out how the controls work in this game because I, I was able to win a lot of races. Okay. This, okay. This game utilizes an invisible throttle that you can't see. Uh, whenever you push up on your stick... You don't have to constantly push up on your stick. If you stop pushing up, your speed remains right. constant. Right, sort of like test drive. Okay. Yeah. And so, now the problem is, is that you're never quite sure when you've reached the max throttle. Yes. Um, but if you are able to, at least on the first three or four courses, if you're able to get your throttle up to sort of a normal speed and then not hit any walls, you can win races. Yeah. And this is a game I tried on both the Deluxe. I played this all week on the uh, on the, an actual Coco 3. I didn't use the Mister at all this time. I used the actual Coco 3. I started out using the Deluxe joystick. Then I switched to a, 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 a Sega Genesis pad. I had much more success with the Sega Genesis pad because you have to make sort of rapid left and right movements 
you need to know where those are. It's almost segmented on a controller versus the Black Beauty. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. You can be like, bam, bam, bam. Your right. car goes one, two, three, four, right. five, six. Right, exactly. Now, that's, I mean, you think you would make it more friendly to the analog stick, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that much luck with, I mean, you're right. I had more luck with the, with the, with the Genesis stick. Yeah, and it also makes you wonder in a game like this why they wouldn't use the fire button to accelerate, you know, yeah. they're not using the fire button for anything in this game. I could not figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't figure that out. I will say this does have two button support. Did you notice that? No. The second button is a pause. Really? Yeah. The oh. second button is, okay. the, the, is a pause. Because trust me, I thought I locked up the, the the thing, and I was like, oh, it's pause. So that's kind of neat. I mean, listen, this is a no frills game. All right. If you paid, I don't know what this was going for back today. If you paid full price for this. Uh, if you paid like tw usually twenty nine bucks, for whatever, I'd think you'd be felt like you got screwed. But if I had a shiny new Coco three, this just doesn't cut it. This is an well, ancient game that I played on the Odyssey. The Odyssey two had a game. Now it wasn't as pretty as this, but I mean it's the same basic game with the tank controls. Uh, I liked, of course, like I said, in the in in between parts, it's sort of like Iron Man Stewart where you upgrade your car. That's cool. But I had trouble even getting too many. I wasn't as apt at this as you were. I, I won some races. And you could come back early and win, but later on in the game, the other cars get a lot tougher. And oh yeah, then, and, and then it makes it a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Buck Owens says point out that the, the the button is your brake. I didn't you really use the brake that often because I your I use the walls. Slow. I use the wall as my brake. Yeah, um, I didn't. I don't think. I don't know. I did. I didn't feel like it did anything. I hit it all the time. I didn't see. It didn't do nothing for me. The um, you know, this is a game. If you're a Coco Three owner. You, I believe, you know, it's, you know, the Coco 3 came out in 86, right? I think it was something like that. And, uh, you know, you're, look, you're on the lookout for anything that's Coco 3 only, because right. you know it's going to be a big jump up graphically from a 1 and 2 game. If this game, if you are playing with buddies, okay, if you've got two friends and you've got a little gaming group, I can see how this would be a worthwhile addition to your library. Yeah. This isn't going to blow anybody away playing it single player. But you can have a lot of fun playing this with three players, and in that case, it's not the worst thing in the world that you can't bump and run into each other and make each other explode because the track does get pretty crowded. You know, with if you're the, the track is basically four cars across. You, there's not if everybody's lined up, there's not a whole lot of space that you can go into. So, um, it's still bare bones. It is very and part bare of the bones. fun. Play with your friends is giving them a little something. You know, I mean, you're right. The track, but I mean. Uh, and there are there are lots of tracks. Yeah, too. there's lots of tracks. You know, um, you, if you can get to them, uh, but at, at the end of the day, is this one I'm going to ever go back to? No, I played it on stream. I didn't like it. Had trouble with the controls, and then playing it again because I knew what we were playing this time. I'm like, okay, I played this one, and I think of all the Daikon games I've played, this is not even in my top and top fifteen. Mm -hmm. I think this, you know, and for a Coco Three game, like I said, just it's just remedial. I would have liked to, you know, it would have been great to have a little bit more action graphically. I yeah. would say. Yeah. Now I will say just a, you run five laps on this, and you you start with three lives, and if you come in second, you lose a life. If you come in third, you lose two lives. So basically, if you can come in first or second, you're okay. But you can only come in third once, mm -hmm. and if you come in third again, you're done. Which right. happened to me quite a bit. Now, like I said, in the for probably the first two races, you can sort of come back and win if you have a good run at it. But often, the computer never screws up. Did we mention that? They never fail. Yeah. They just robotically go around the track, which is something else I don't like. I mean, come on. They just robotically go along the track, and the fact that there's no wrecks to avoid or anything. And since none of the obstacles affect them, well, they just, you gotta admit, that's all they you're do. You're asking a lot from computer AI from 1987. I've Listen played a lot that. of racing games, and no no cars are wrecking on the track in 1987. Listen, the, in the, on the Odyssey, you, it, you, it was more fun and more frantic than this. I'm not saying the cars are smarter, but you can't have slow and boring. You can have one or the other, but you can't have both. When you've got both, then you've got a dud. A I think dud. I think I like this one a little bit more. Than you know, you did. I looked for some, uh, I looked for some reviews in this. And I didn't see much, but I did. I wanted to point this out because Curtis had mentioned this on Curtis's great uh, website, El Curtis Boyle, and his uh, he pretty much has all really the big library of game information. He, he said that he had a personal theory that the the controls in this are odd. Because uh, Diacom uh, had thought about releasing a wheel. He said he thought. This is a theory of his. Now, 
because uh, uh, they also had the gun game, so they were they had done some peripherals. I think they just used tank controls. I don't think there's I don't think there was any wheel playing. I mean, if they had one planet, I think I mean I don't know how else would you set this up for control. There's not really much of another way. You could have the the button do it, uh, accelerate and control the car with the thing, but this is not that unstandard. It's just annoying. No. Yeah. they're annoying controls. This is a game. The, most games that are in this perspective control exactly the same as this game. Yeah, uh, but I did not get any action on eBay, or I did not get any reviews from magazines. On this. What did you get from the Discord? We got a couple reviews. Our first one comes from Exile in Paradise, and he says the challenge is all in getting away from the wall at all. I want to like this game, but trying to drive around the track is like punching yourself in the face with your joystick repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. I think the non-existent spectators in this race have more ability to will this car around the track than I do. With months of practice, I might make a single lap with this thing, but my grinding teeth would have worn down to nothing long before then. The graphics look great. The sounds are sparse, but generally serviceable. The most noticeable absence is some sort of engine rev to give some illusion of speed. But the controls or basic lack thereof killed this for me pretty quickly. I even read the manual to make sure I understood the control scheme. But the results on screen had nothing to do with the scheme described in the manual. I tried to high speed poke this, but I think the turtle's loader negates that because the sounds and speed didn't seem to change. Speaking of phoning it in, the crack screen is worse than a day one C64 crack <laughs> screen from 1982. Yeah. And this was 1987. Now, if the turtle could have trained the control routines, that would have been a literal game changer and made up for the loading screen. Hurts me to say this, but this game looks like a great example of missed opportunities. I don't know what to rate it because I am utterly incapable of playing it as it is. Mm. L. Curtis Boyle writes, Basically, a clone of the arcade hit Super Sprint 2 by Atari, it was one of the first Coco 3 based games that DICOM released a little less than a year after the Coco 3 itself was available. So I'll cut it some slack as Dave Dyes was just learning all of the new hardware. Graphically, from screenshots, it looks quite good with 25 different tracks, multiplayer, and the same mechanic as the arcade of collecting wrenches on the track to buy upgrades to various parts of your car. Where the game falls is in three categories. Speed, controls, and sound. <laughs> all other categories. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. The car is driving around quite slowly, never giving much of a feel for speed. And considering there's not much else on the screen besides three cars, it's not a CPU-related issue. The controls are very odd, with left, right on the joystick turning you in that direction and up, down, doing the speed, versus the much more natural steer in the direction that you point. It almost seems as though the game may have been originally designed for a steering wheel add-on. The sound is very is. minimal. That's right. Same thing you just said. So it's not a terrible game, but not one of DICOM's better efforts either. I would normally rate it a 4.5 out of 10, but I will make it 5.5 just because of how early in the Coco 3 game era it came out. Stick with the 4 out of 5. Don't reward mm -hmm. it for sucking at the new computer. I'm not mm -hmm. buying that. You know, this is not that far from a Coco 2 game. Yeah. It's not like you couldn't possibly do this with a Coco 2. I mean, we, we didn't even mention the sound because it's, there, it's like a brrrr. There's not a whole lot of sound to it. Dud. Mm -hmm. It's funny. We don't usually cr crank down on a Coco game. This is, amongst the ones we played, this is in my lower echelon. I disagree. What did you like about it? I like this game. It's also slow. I like the fact that I could win races. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, oh, well, I I couldn't do it, so you're a better man than me. Uh, no eBay on this, like I said, so this that's that's it. That's all I got, Boat. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's Coco Show. We appreciate you all uh, for listening, as always. And, uh, you know, if you are feeling froggy and you want to support the Coco Show, help make it a weekly program, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Show. And uh, you can uh, slip us a couple bucks. If we get to $200 a month, the Coco Show will morph from a monthly uh, episode to a weekly show. Uh, we want to give a big, tandy thank you to our game selection committee, the uh, group that selects these games for us. Uh, Canadian Retro Things, L. Curtis Boyle, Robert Murphy, and Steve Rasmussen. And uh, we want to give a big shout out to all of our Coco Show supporters, including Graham W. Vebke, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Buttons, and William Becker. Uh, if you like this format and you want to hear more, feel free to check out our other shows, Amigos, Everything Amiga, R. Sinclair, an American Take on the ZX Spectrum, the Atari ST Show, 1200XL, and ARG Presents, where Aaron and the Brent spin the wheel and make the deal. 
All of these shows can be found on the Amigos Retro Gaming YouTube channel or at anchor.fm slash Amigos Podcast. Aaron, what are we going to be playing next time? I see what we got, bro. Oh, man. Brogger goes out under. You know what that means. Jumping Joey. Jumping Joey. This is a brand new release from our buddy Nick Marente. Yes. It just I think this literally was just released this week, mm. mode. So we'll get this will be cool. It's a new blood, a Brogger type game. Uh coming down from Nick. Nick is a genius. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to try this. When you when you suggest it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm down with that big time. Let's do it. So thank you all so much for listening. We will see you next time. And until then, all hail. L. Curtis Boyle. Oh, 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 keep it going, Bodo.